All right, somebody needs to get yeah. this thing going again. I'll do it. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Ow! Oh, someone's got me. I love this game. Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're playing some Warhammer Dark Tide and sharing a few things I like about the game. Um, if you enjoy the video, hit the like button. It helps me out a ton. Um, if you want to save the dolphins, subscribe. I have to be honest, between the state of modern gaming um, and me being new to the whole Warhammer thing, I wasn't expecting a whole lot. Maybe that was for the better, uh, but I really honestly feel like this game is doing something right. The first thing that kind of like sucked me in was the visceral melee combat. I mean, you get like a shovel right off the bat and <laughs> you start going ham on these uh, AI opponents, but you start like kind of working your way through these sewer systems or fantasy style dungeons and it's, and it's addicting. The environments feel really big and they aren't like uh, vibrant or obnoxious, but they also don't have those obnoxious like HUD elements where it's like constantly holding your hand and telling you exactly where you need to go. Now this feels like gently nudging you in the direction that you're supposed to go. And the mats are actually pretty linear, which is the most amazing aspect of this because you don't really feel like, you know, several times I, I said to the group, I, I feel like I'm kind of wandering through the map aimlessly and <laughs> like finding the right way to go. Um, which is really interesting for a very linear game, how they were able to pull that off. It just goes to show you the environments and gameplay have a lot to do with it. But the combat mechanics feel great. After I bumped up the FOV a smidge, um, I swapped out a couple of keybinds and it felt perfect. I mean, it's a lot of like mindless AI running at you with like machetes and stuff, but the gameplay loop feels really good. Like it kind of sucks you in. So, you know, I don't typically go for a lot of these melee combat kind of games. It's usually not my style. I like guns. I like gunplay and that's a big aspect of the, the types of games that I like to play but I gotta say the the melee combat in this game feels good enough that the gunplay doesn't feel like a requirement like I feel like you could honestly go through and just hack and slash your way through uh, this game you don't you don't ever need to fire a single bullet now is it fun to use the, the weapons like the, the firearms yeah it, it is it's enjoyable um, but I find myself more often than not pulling out the axe and just lopping off heads <laughs> I mean that's just uh, there, there's something about the melee combat in this game that uh, that just makes it really, really enjoyable. Now, the loading times do feel a bit long. To be fair, I do have this installed on a hard drive and not an SSD, and that's probably 80% of my issue, but I do feel like maybe the load times are a bit longer than I would prefer them to be. Now, if that is due to them trying to render this massive map with all these AI components and everything else, I wouldn't want to sacrifice experience for a shorter load time. What's really cool though, is that the character customization actually caught me off guard. Now I was, I was honestly thinking this was gonna be like a pick a hero type of game and just kind of roll with it, uh, but it's not. It's, there's, there's a lot more depth to it. You, you get to choose your backstory and like kind of your occupation and things like that and your personality traits. I still don't know how that affects gameplay or if it affects it at all or if it's just you know you kind of you creating your own rp lawyer or, or, or whatever but um it is it is a neat aspect of the game uh because it goes a little bit deeper i mean you you get to customize the physical aspects of your character too so uh there's these bigger dudes i don't know what they're called but they're like <laughs> kind of like ogres i guess and uh, they've got their own custom customization traits and things uh, I, I went with a zealot um but it, it's fun i mean you know i don't have to be i don't have to have all these like built-in talents right off the bat to enjoy the game because it kind of gets you used to the gunplay and just fighting you know, room to room, and then it slowly integrates talents and other things. Like uh, now, I can throw knives, <clears throat> and it's uh, it's like a one shot, one shot kill as soon as I hit somebody with a knife, and it can be really rewarding when you got like a big dude running at you and you throw a throwing knife and he like drops at your feet. It's just it's fun. It adds to that immersion. There's a, there's a prologue, which, you know, I hate prologues and I'm never going to be one of those people that says prologues are necessary, you know, because there's always those people that just want to jump in and play with their friends. They don't want to have to go through the rigmarole of playing through, you know, story and watching cutscenes and all that. Now, with that being said, I do appreciate that the cutscenes are skippable um, and, you know, the prologue isn't too terribly long. I feel like the initial escape mission kind of gives you the basic ground layout on like what control 
controls are and all that. And then immediately after that, you have to go into this like virtual training uh, simulator where they kind of like walk you through different scenarios and show you exactly like what you need to do and um, how to do it, which is pretty cool because, you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of functions uh, to your character that uh, you wouldn't otherwise know without doing the training. So games I would compare this to, you know, it's really difficult to just choose one. I would say if Deep Rock Galactic met Vermintide and those two had a baby with uh, Destiny Wolfenstein, you know, maybe with a little dying light sprinkled in there, that would probably give you this game. It's, it's a, probably a pretty good comparison. It's made by people that give it and that's it's apparent. I mean, you can tell. EA and the Greedy Bunch need to like take some notes. This this is what we want, guys. This stuff right here. It's it's not that hard. Uh, just more of this, please. There aren't any microtransactions that are like thrown in your face or anything. Now they do have a little cosmetic store, but like I said, it's not like you know you don't boot the game up and bam, you're hit with like oh buy this costume and and you know put this flame charm on your sword. You know it's none of that. The missions are fun, and what I really found, and I've played probably 10 to 15 of them now. They they each one feels unique. You know, you're, you'll see similar enemy types across different missions, but it feels like they kind of do a good job of mixing it up and mixing up the environment too. So you never really feel like you're in the same place, which is another really cool thing. Um, boss fights are a thing. They feel challenging. Beating them like requires everybody to participate. So when you do, it it feels earned. It's fun. If a teammate dies, they don't just respawn at the last checkpoint. They actually respawn handcuffed in third person with guards nearby, which is an interesting dynamic because that teammate almost always spawns in a location you haven't cleared yet. So retrieving them is a is a chore and you need to kind of stick together while you do so. Ammo is limited and you do run out, but the resupplies don't feel frustratingly scarce and melee combat doesn't feel like a punishment. You know, it's not that big of a deal when you run out of ammo, just pull out your axe or your sword and start whacking away um, until you find the next ammo crate probably around the corner. A lot of enemies are one or two hits. It feels really fast paced and in your face, but you can easily get overwhelmed if there's no nearby support as you're learning the game mechanics. I highly recommend when you're in melee combat, blocking as, as much as you can using the block shove and then dodging left, right, and backwards. You can really string together some cool one-two punches on the bad guys. There are a ton of cool details as well. Like one of the little things I like about the game is when you go to the heel station, it's got like this crazy little animatronic alien looking thing that like reaches its little arms out and like heals you, which is kind of cool. Kind of gave me some like Independence Day vibes. <laughs> Another thing I like is when there's like these extra heavy enemies and they'll run at you from a distance and you can kind of like hear the footsteps and the growls. And it's kind of like adding to the anticipation knowing that any minute now they're gonna like round the corner or pop up at the top of the staircase and they're gonna be sprinting right towards you. If they get a hold of you, you're gonna take a lot of damage. So, and the same thing, there's like these bomber dudes too. And it sounds like a clock is ticking when, when, they're, when they spawn in. So you're like, oh, sh you know, you get thrown like you could get thrown off the map, which is another thing, too. If you fall over a ledge, you, you can't you don't just like die or respawn. What happens is you go into this like little third person animation where you see your character kind of hanging off the, the bars, you know, just like waiting for rescue. And I don't know how long you stay there before you actually slip or if you slip. It's another interesting aspect of the game that kind of dictates how you play it, you know? So, you know, it's not just like rezzing down teammates all the time. Sometimes you got to pull, <laughs> pull them back over the ledge or, um, you know, free them from uh, like a shock net, which is another thing that incapacitates people. Um, so there's there's a lot of little things that require teamwork. It's not something that you, you can just like run in and solo all the time. And the difficulty level, I mean, even for beginners is not easy. You start off and it, as you're learning the game, you'll probably die a few times. You'll probably fail a few missions. And that's just like beginner level. We decided we were gonna take it up a notch and we're not prepared for the next difficulty level. So, so having a game that's like an actual challenge instead of something you can beat any which way to Sunday is a really welcome change in the gaming industry, at least in my opinion. Opinion. Hop down in the comments and tell me what your favorite builds are and what direction you went and give me some advice because I'm really liking this game. All right, guys, I'm Savvy and I'll see you on the next one.